hello and welcome back to the channel on today's tutorial i'm going to be sharing with you how to cut and sew a crisscross gown and if you haven't yet subscribed please hit on the subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so let's dive right into today's video so the first thing you're going to do is to go ahead to mark your basic measurements so i've gone ahead to mark my shoulder to bust shoulder to under bust shoulder to waistline and from my waistline i marked seven inches to get my hip point so i mistakenly wrote that as top then after that i marked my dress length so the full length of this dress is 35 inches so next i went ahead to mark my shoulder divided by two so my shoulder is 14 divided by 2, I have 7 and I will go ahead to go down by 1 inch. From that point, I'm going to go ahead to mark my shoulder slope or shoulder slant and after that, I'll be marking a basic neckline of 3 inches by 3 inches. After I'm done marking that, I'm going to go ahead to place my ruler and I'm going to connect drawing this out. So the next thing is to find my armhole or chest line which is your bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches. So mine is 7 after dividing and whatever I have on the shoulder which is 7 inches, I'm going to place a mark. This is just to make sure I have a straight line and I'll go ahead to connect my ruler and I will mark. So now I'll just measure what I have from my bust down to that chest line. So the difference I have there is just one inch and I'll go ahead to draw out. So yours might be one inch, 1.5 or two inches. It totally depends on your body measurement. And this is just to make sure I have a straight line. So I'll be dividing what I have at the armhole into two and I'll come in by half inch. Now I'm just going to go ahead to connect. So I was supposed to mark my bust circumference on the chest line which i forgot but i'll go ahead to do that now i place back my tape and i marked my bust circumference divided by four my bust is 33 divided by four i have approximately 8.3 and i'll go ahead to reconnect and clean off the initial mistake so after i'm done doing this the next step is to go ahead and mark your dart so to mark your dart is your nipple to nipple divided by two or your bust pan divided by two mine is seven inches divided by two i have 3.5 so i'm just going to go ahead to mark this all the way to the hip point so here you see me correcting this as the hip point because i mistakenly wrote that as my top length so i'll just go ahead to place my ruler and i'm going to connect to drawing a straight line so after i'm done doing that i'll be marking a dart intake of half inch on both sides and i'll go ahead also to come down by one inch from my bust so because to draw your dart is your shoulder to bust plus one inch and then you mark half inch on your waist and you're going to connect so at the lower part i'm going to come up by three inches so if you're on a plus size you want to go ahead on your waist you're going to use 0 0.75 or one inch this is just to make sure that it's going to give you a more fitted effect there so after that i'll insert my body measurements my bust circumference divided by four which is 33 divided by four i have 8.3 i'll add one inch for my sewing allowance at the under bust i'll mark my under bust circumference divided by four my under bust is 28 inches divided by four i have seven inches go ahead to measure that little that intake mark and add my sewing allowance now at the waist i'll mark my waist circumference which is 28 divided by 4 and i will mark and after that i'll go ahead to replace the dart intake and add my sewing allowance of one inch and at the hip point i'm going to mark my hip circumference divided by 4 which is 10 inches and i'll go ahead to add one inch to it for my sewing allowance so now whatever you have on the hip you're going to take out 1.5 or 2 inches from it so my hip is 40 divided by divided by 4 i have 10 plus 1 inch making it 11 so i will do 11 minus 1.5 what i have is 9.5 inches so if you want it more fitted on your dress probably you're using a stretchy fabric you can go ahead and minus 2 inches and i'll just go ahead to connect this all the way from the upper part down to the lower part of my pattern this way and after i'm done connecting we are going to also go ahead to trace this out on the other side of our fabric so from my bust point i'll come down by one inch and i'll be adding a bust start to this pattern so 
from that point i'll connect it down to my bust so this is like different from what you actually we actually do with a victorian corset so if you're transferring this measurement to the other side so for this bust that that you took out you're going to also replace it at the lower part of your pattern so i'm going to do that actually when i'm cutting this out and what i'm going to do now is to go ahead to just trace out or cut out my pattern so if you have any question please don't forget to leave it at the comment section and if you haven't yet subscribed please hit on the subscribe button so all these measurements i have here i'm just going to go ahead to trace it out on the other side of my pattern paper she got my back i do you i'm happy that i do you say everything i do is for my woman anything i talk when you talk i go do one they see another girl for my visuals yeah. Loving you, loving you, now in my ritual She got my back, I do you, I'm happy that so now it's time to trace the other parts or to trace out the neckline so i'll come up by half inch here and connect it to the armhole and from the shoulder point i will be tracing this out to the lower part so i'm actually using a free hand to do this if you can use your french curve go ahead to do that so i'll measure 1.5 inches from that point because what we have on the neckline is a bit little and from there i'm just going to connect it to the center of my pattern so coming to the chest line i'll come out by 0.75 inches and connect so i don't want the hole or the keyhole neckline there to be too big and from there i'm going to connect it down so getting to the under bust i'm going to mark like half inch and i'll connect it to the other side so after that i'm going to go ahead to come down by 1.5 inches to draw out that little curve on the other side and i'll go ahead to connect this way after i'm done connecting i'm just going to go ahead to use my marker to outline this to make it more visible for you to see so when we are sewing out this when we are sewing this pattern we are going to sew our bust dart and after sewing your bust dart we are going to blend this dart in because there's no dart actually on this dress while looking at the thumbnail you notice there's no dart on the dress so now let's go ahead and work on the other side so i went ahead to use my old pattern paper and i placed it on it this way so i'm just going to trace out the basic pattern of this dress not the neckline yet but i'll be tracing out the neckline later so go ahead and place a pattern paper that will get up to the waistline or about three inches after your underbust measurement so this is what i have after i'm done tracing and you're going to use that other part to trace the remaining side so go ahead to make a mark at your bust and your under bust so now we are going to go ahead to start marking out the neckline for this pattern so before marking out go ahead to check what you have so sorry i'm using an old pattern paper i ran short of pattern paper so i had to go ahead to use what i have at home so from the neckline just like we connected at the front part i'm going to connect from the neckline down to the chest line but go up a bit by half inch at the chest line and i will be using my freehand sketch to do this and after i'm done tracing out that part i'm going to go ahead to measure about 1.5 inches just the same way we did on the other side and whatever we did while cutting out the front part we are also going to do it at this point so when we got to the chest line i went in by 0 0.75 just like we did on the other side and you're going to go ahead to connect it down to your under bust like we also did on the other side 
So after I'm done doing that, I'm just going to go ahead to use my marker to trace this out so that it's going to be very visible for you to see. So after you're done tracing it out, place your pattern together. You notice that you're going to have that crisscross effect. So my pattern paper, you can actually see through it. So it's easier for me to see what I'm cutting. So the next thing I'll do is to go ahead and cut out one side of the neckline that is the one that we traced out so as you can see this is what i have and it's already giving the crisscross effect and then i'll go ahead to just trace out the curve on this part and also just take it i will mark cut it that straight so that it won't cut the keyhole neckline we are going to achieve so while lifting my pattern paper already you notice that it is forming the crisscross shape so when you're cutting this you're going to lift up your pattern paper just to make sure that it's in line with what you have at the other side and after doing that go ahead to trace the other side exactly what you have at the under boss that's 1.5 inches we came down from at the under bust make sure you lift your pattern paper and you're going to trace it out so i'm just going to cut this out this part out so that it will be easier for me to see what i am tracing out so you can also use your tracing wheel to do that but if i use a tracing wheel you're not going to really see it so that's why i use this method so that in case you're cutting yours it might not be too difficult cut for you so i'll go ahead and i'll follow the shape that i have at the under bust so this is what i have and you're going to go ahead to trace this out so when you're tracing out make sure that your bust line is on your bust the bust line of one part is at the other bust line so when i was cutting this out i didn't notice but i went ahead to readjust it make sure that your bust line is matching your chest line is matching so that by the time you're sewing your dress it will not be giving you a different neckline altogether so if you place it this way so if you notice we have achieved that keyhole at the bust but i didn't make mine too big because i don't want my bust to be too revealing on this dress and that's why we are actually adding a bust that so that it can help us give the bust shape at that side so this is what you we have as you can see this is the keyhole neckline this is the crisscross keyhole neckline dress so i'm just going to readjust the other part of my pattern and i will be tracing out my gown later so i'll go ahead and i will trace out my gown just readjust it and make a notch where those two points meet is very very important or you can just make a mark there so i'll just go ahead and cut the rest of my dress so this is it if i place it together as you can see we have created the crisscross keyhole neckline so for the back pattern of this dress i'll be using the same pattern to cut this out but before cutting that out on the neckline you notice that it's extended to the back so i'll be adding about 2.5 or 3 inches when we're cutting this out which i'll be cutting on the channel so for the back pattern i'm going to be using this same pattern just like i said all i'm going to do is just to fold it in replace that part that i have on the keyhole neckline and i'll be adding my zipper allowance to it so for that part i'll be cutting it on the channel so that you will not get confused with what i'm saying so at this point if you find this tutorial very interesting and educative please don't forget to hit on the subscribe button give this video a thumbs up and join us in our sewing video